a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. So let's get started. Um, uh, I am Casey Troy, your staff contact at Head to the Hill. And we're so glad you'll be joining us for Head to the Hill and representing the brain tumor community in your state on Capitol Hill. Um, a few housekeeping notes. Uh, first, we'll be muting the lines for all attendees during the presentation section of this webinar and we'll unmute during questions at the end. So um, please feel free to keep track of your questions and we'll ask them all in, in one section at the end. Um, and we'll be recording this webinar so folks who aren't able to make it can see it later or if you need it for reference, we'll email it to the entire group uh, after uh, the webinar. If you are not able to see the entire presentation, um, you can resize your screen on Zoom in the upper right hand corner. Uh, you can enter full screen and that should show you the full uh, presentation. Uh, so first, the agenda for today, we will be preparing for Head to the Hill. So I'll, we'll let you know what you can do before Head to the Hill. Um, what what the days look like while we're in D.C. on May 2nd and 3rd, your schedule, meetings, and how we're creating a presence on Capitol Hill. We'll be going over what to do after Head to the Hill, how to follow up with your members of Congress. Uh, we'll talk about what we need from you and finish up with any questions you may have and wrap up the meeting after that. So we plan to go for one hour. And uh, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Lisa Peabody, who is our feet on the ground presence in Washington, DC. Hi, uh, so I'm Lisa. I just joined the staff here about two months ago and I'm local, so I know the area. I saw somebody sent a note in Casey about not being able to hear. Can we do a tech check? Are we able to hear everyone? Okay, so hopefully that's been resolved. Um, so let me talk about what um, influences our officials. You know, ultimately the constituents, you, you elect your, you elect your representatives. So they really are beholden to what it is that is important to you. They know that in the end you are choosing them. I think it's really important that they hear your stories because um, it kind of connects them to the community. And uh, as uh, since I'm here in, in DC, I sometimes go to a hearing where they're talking to other legislators. And almost every time they start to sell or talk about a piece of legislation, they start with a story. And it's often your story. So your story is, it's, it's way bigger than just sharing it once. It often gets repeated and used as a, a reason for other officials to get on board with a piece of legislation. To the, I'm not sure how to change the slide, Casey. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Um, if um, here's this is a cool little chart that shows you that um, how affected uh, legislators are with your voice, and you can see that if they're not sure about which way to vote, if you come in with your story, you get this 46% chance of them hearing you and being in support of. Next. So um, here's similar kind of reasons that we we're just talking about, about fighting for the brain tumor community. Advocates have experiences that policymakers do not. So your story um, kind of um, enlightens them to the specific issues of brain tumors. And there's a very good chance that they don't know your, your issues and our challenges because there are, there are great challenges having a brain tumor in our community. Uh, by sharing those experiences, advocates become valuable resources for members of Congress who need to know how their policy decisions are affecting the brain tumor community. Your story will resonate with them, and the next time they have to make a vote, I, I, we know that they consider what it is that you said and how their vote is affecting the brain tumor community as well as their constituents. Advocates promote forward looking policies at the federal and state level aimed at advancing the developments of new treatments and making more treatments available. Next. Um, so David's going to take over specifically what's happening in Congress and the climate. David Aarons is our CEO. Go ahead, David. David. 
Thanks, Lisa. Uh, welcome, everybody. And again, thank you so much for signing up for Head to the Hill. And we really look forward to, to seeing you very, very soon. Um, there's a lot happening in Congress right now. And, it, and uh, it's, of course, not just you know, any kind of year. It's a, it's a big election year. And so uh, that that's, uh, has a huge impact on what Congress is working on and, and, and the rate at which it's working on, on legislation. And so just to get specific, um, Congress is, is really getting into full swing for the fiscal year 2017 budget. And ha you know, every year Congress has to put together a budget. Uh, the first step is the president uh, lays out um, the, the administration's budget plan, and that was done in February. And then Congress responds and puts together its own kind of, its own budget. And of course, what's, what's, what's should happen is the House and Senate produce budget resolutions or budget blueprints that give instructions to the spending committees called appropriations committees for how much they can spend in different areas of the federal government on different agencies. And so right now the budget committees haven't reported uh, their budget blueprints yet. And so what's going to happen is the spending committees are simply getting going um, anyway to create spending bills and then they'll reconcile it later. So uh, right now in different committees of interest uh, that, that oversee the, the federal agencies that provide the, the most funding for brain tumor research, such as the National Institutes of Health, and including the National Cancer Institute, um, the National Institute for Neurological Disorders and Stroke. All of those committees are beginning to, they're holding hearings, they're hearing testimony around what, what should be the priorities for FY17, and what's it all going to cost. And then the staff and the members who work in those committees put together a draft bill, and then they eventually bring that bill to the committee and they vote uh, and amend that bill. And so this is a perfect time for Head to the Hill because these committees are just beginning to craft these, these spending bills. And so it means that our voice is, is well-timed to be influential in the budget process. Of course, one of the things we're asking for is increased support for medical research funding, an increase in support for the NIH and an increase in support for the National Cancer Institute in particular. Uh, so we'll be specifically asking for a $2.4 billion increase for the NIH for FY17 to bring its budget to just over $34 billion, to $34.5 billion. And uh, in light of the, the whole Vice President's Moonshot Initiative, um, we're requesting that the funding for NCI be prioritized in that, and that NCI, the National Cancer Institute, receive at least $5.9 billion, which would be a $680 million increase uh, uh, in order to get this funding underway. And of course, we'd like to see the NCI not only get mandatory money to be spent on the moonshot, but also a larger increase to spend on the other things it does, which have a a significant impact on brain tumor research funding. And the NCI, for example, has uh, initiatives that not only help brain tumors but other cancers, but have some very important cancer specific or brain tumor specific programs that we're going to talk about during Head to the Hill. Uh, of course, then the House and Senate have different versions uh, of things, and uh, then hopefully they come together. Uh, one of the big issues we'll see is whether is whether Congress does pass an FY17 budget, and also we'll talk about at Head to the Hill what happens if if they are not if they are not able to come together, uh, and what 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 are the scenarios for that? But of course, the election season, as I said at the beginning, plays a big role. And what the the biggest the biggest thing that the election season is doing to Congress is is, is it's forcing Congress to try to get all the big stuff done earlier in the year and get a lot of things happening right now. So, because Congress wants to go home and campaign. So it wants to get its work done as much as possible before the end of July so they can have a, a long recess and, and keep campaigning. And so um, uh, the other thing that's exciting in Congress is, is really a ripening opportunity for us to advance another priority, uh, which is um, in the childhood cancer 
uh, research, access, treatment, and survivorship bill that we're, we've been pushing for the last two years that NBTS helped write with other pediatric cancer groups and coalition as part of the Alliance for Childhood Cancer. And so w there's a, a great interest in this, and we'll talk a lot about that at Head of the Hill, but it's, it's perfect because all of your advocacy uh, through emails, through phone calls, really primes the pump. So by the time we come to Head to the Hill, they're really ready to hear your stories and for us to make those asks. And so we're in a, in a, uh, in, in some ways, this compressed congressional environment creates positive, hopefully positive pressure to, to push our agenda items faster and, and further along than they might otherwise be. So we're hoping to, to use the environment in a positive way. So uh, what's happening, we, the other thing you should know about what's happening in Congress is the unknown, which is um, anytime, at any time, there, there could be some overwhelming issue that captures the attention of Congress the week that we are, the week they're going to be there. And um, sometimes a foreign policy issue comes up that is unexpected, a national security issue, unexpected. A foreign leader is coming to address Congress unexpected. So there are some things we, we can't predict, but the, uh, we need to let you know that there are some things that from time to time do come up, which draw attention away, but uh, still in all, um, we expect this to be a terrific head to the hill and, and for there to be great attention to our issues. Just, just finally, just, um, and I'll go on to cancer moonshot here in just a second. Um, wanted just to, to make sure everybody knows that um, the, the time that we're having head to the hill is, is, is a congressional recess period. The, the downside of that is the members of Congress themselves are less likely to be on the hill that day. The upside of, the, of that is that you, we usually have much better meetings with the congressional staff and the staff are the gatekeepers to the members of Congress themselves. And they usually have a lot more time, time to think about our issues, time to hear what we're saying, including our stories. And for us to build those precious relationships with congressional staff that lead to a member of Congress supporting our issues. From time to time, we always run into the issue of Head to the Hill falling into a week that is a congressional recess. And the reason for this is because we have to book the hotels in D.C. way ahead of the congressional schedules coming out because of the demand for hotel space. So it happens about once every four years, and it just happens to be this year. I don't expect it to happen again in for a while, but um, we expect to have a terrific head to the hill. We have invited a member of Congress, um, uh, and we also have uh, legislative staff from the hill coming to speak to us, which is great. And that gets into the National Cancer Moonshot, the, the vice president's initiative, who will be, um, uh, and the, the moonshot is a big, a big topic. It's getting a lot of, a lot of press. Uh, but it, what it boils down to is a, a project which is being coordinated by Vice President Biden and his staff, the National Cancer Institute, and is, is um, engaging all the federal cabinets and the cabinet agency directors, the cabinet secretaries, um, into an effort to raise about 700 million in government dollars through the appropriations process and create a, a structure that could be created while Vice President Biden is in office, but then be an enduring structure for when he leaves office. And, what, uh, and this would be a vessel for investing and driving forward and accelerating cancer research. The, the two goals of the National Cancer Moonshot are to accelerate cancer research and to change the trajectory of cancer research so that it, so that it can make, have a, a greater impact. Uh, this White House task force, like I said, has been created of, of agency heads and what's been formed under the leadership of the, the, uh, the National Cancer Institute is a blue ribbon panel of uh, scientific and patient advocacy leaders to think about what could be recommended projects for uh, this, this funding to be spent on. And so the Blue Ribbon Panel has to put together a report um, due in July of recommendations of 
what should the, the moonshot focus on? And uh, it'll be a, a fast-paced effort. National Brain Tumor Society, uh, we're, we're very pleased that we have a, a seat at the table in this blue ribbon panel. Um, and there are working groups that are going to be formed out of the blue ribbon panel that give opportunities for uh, lots of other groups as well as uh, a, a, a larger scale citizen participation uh, effort is being planned so that anyone can uh, weigh in, offer ideas, and, and be part of this moonshot effort. But uh, it's exciting stuff, and we want to make sure that uh, no matter what, we're advocating for the brain tumor community as part of this to make sure we're, um, uh, that whatever happens is also accelerating brain tumor research. And so that's, our, that's one of our key goals. Uh, why don't I stop there and turn it back to, to Casey? Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, David. Lisa David. will talk Lisa will be talking about. Sorry, I have some feedback. Lisa will talk about preparing for head to the hell now. Lisa, are you on the line? Well, thank you. I was waiting for uh, somebody to unmute me. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, so um, what to wear. So on Monday, we do the, um, the all-day training in the hotel, and it's just comfortable clothes. You're going to be sitting and standing, so whatever's comfortable in that um, environment. On Tuesday, when you have your meetings, you don't necessarily have to wear a business suit. You can. Um, you're just going to be clean and clean and groomed in your business casual clothes. We get um, a navy blue t-shirt as part of our event, and you're welcome to wear that. It's nice when everybody has those on, but you don't have to. Compare that with a skirt or slacks, and men can wear slacks. You can wear a tie. You don't have to wear a tie. I would just highly recommend that you wear comfortable walking shoes. It's, it's a huge, the buildings are huge. Each one of them is like the size of half a football stadium, and you're going to be in across six buildings and walking all the way across from the Senate to the house and you'll be outside. So wear whatever shoes feel good on your feet. Next. Um, preparing for Head to the Hill. So as I mentioned, you're gonna be walking from building to building and once you're in a building, you can take the underground tunnel and you'll be able to stay inside. But then eventually you do have to walk outside to connect to the other buildings and um, there is no indoor way to do it. So definitely prepare for the weather with an umbrella and a raincoat in your bag. Um, bring your cell phone. Carry your power cord on the day of Head to the Hill. That area seems to really suck your battery. So you may, at lunch, you may need to, you know, jumpstart your phone. Um, photos of a loved one. So this is what I often recommend to the group. Take um, a, a three by five index card at home before, before you come and get a picture of your connection to brain tumors and put that picture on one side of your index card. And then on the back, just do uh, three or four bullets about this person's connection to brain tumors. So I put my daughter on one page and on one side and then I flip it over. I lost my 15 month old daughter to a brain tumor in 2004. There were little to no treatments for pediatrics at that time. My name is Lisa Peabody and I live on Honeybee Court, Bethesda, Maryland. So a little, a bullet or two about your connection and you definitely put your name and your state. And I, I wouldn't put more than that, but it's just once you tell your story, it's kind of like your business card that you're gonna put in with the meeting materials. So we will provide meeting materials. It'll, we call that the, the leave behinds. And it's a folder that um, gives a brief about each of the pieces of legislation. And we'll have information about the National Brain Tumor Society. And then you can tuck your index cards with your photos um, in that envelope. And I think that's pretty impactful and powerful and a good memory for our staff to pass on to the congressperson. Next, please. So preparing for Head to the Hill, to me, this is, is the most important part to me of the entire experience. If this is your first time, it's 
there's a lot to learn. It's a bit overwhelming to come in. You have uh, you know, a new area to learn. You have this very large campus. Um, you have the weather. You have to find a bathroom and, and lunch. And then you have to learn your legislation. And then you have to work with a team that's brand new. And it's, it's a lot to take in. And it's definitely doable. But I think it kind of reminds me of like going to college or going to school that if you prepare for the lecture, you get so much more out of it. And so here's what um, our suggestions are. You, um, you'll get an, most likely get an opportunity to tell your story. And you, you need about two minutes. That's, that's about the time frame that you should be planning for. And I would practice your story and see if and time it and see if you can get it impactful with some good um, some good adjectives in there and get that into two minutes and if you've got that down before you show up you're going to be way ahead of the game um, the, we have three issues that we think we're going to be um, talking to our legislators about and you're going to receive the briefs on those and if you read those ahead of time and become a little familiar with the issues, again, it's like being at that lecture and reading the chapter before your teacher speaks about it. I think you'll feel so much more comfortable in learning the material. It will have been your second time or third time hearing about it, and you'll be, you'll be better equipped to speak about it. Um, and the third part is about um, getting to know your legislators. So within um, the House, you'll have one legislator, or congresswoman or congressman in your district. So you can click on that and pop in your zip code and address and find out that person's name. And then within the Senate, you'll have two senators who represent your state, and it would be good to know their names as well. That's already, that's three names you've got to remember, and it'd be good to you know, hear them ahead of time. Next. I think I'm passing this to Lainey. Lainey, do you want to take over? Yes, thank you. And thanks for unmuting me, Stephen. Um, <laughs> thanks, Lisa. That was fantastic. I think everyone can tell that Lisa, although is newer on staff, has um, been a veteran of Head to the Hill for the past few years. So um, really knows her stuff. So if you have any questions while you're there, in addition to Casey, myself, and other staff, Lisa um, really knows what, what's going on. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Those of you who have been before, we're looking forward to seeing you again and everyone else. Um, you know, this is sort of our rundown of what the schedule is going to be like, and it's similar to last year. Um, everything on Monday will take place at the Georgetown University Hotel and Conference Center. If you're coming from the DC area, we highly suggest you take the Metro as well as, um, so there's at the Georgetown University Hotel, there's the Metro and a shuttle bus um, from either the DuPont Circle or the Roslyn Metro stations. There is a bit of construction going on right now at Georgetown, so um, that's going to be a little easier than parking. So please reach out to us if you have any questions on that. But we'll start the day um, at 7.30, breakfast and registration will open. Um, so you'll have that time to come eat something, get your packets and your bags and your t-shirts um, and settle in. You'll be seated by your state so you can get to know the other advocates from your state starting right, right and early that morning. And then we'll start off at 8.45 a.m. with our advocacy training um, and we'll go over on the next slide what that will entail. We'll have lunch um, there at the, in the training room and then continue training and preparation after lunch. Um, that will also be the time when you will have time to sit with your state group and go over the plan for your meetings. So you'll talk about who's going to be the, you know, the group leader to introduce everyone, who wants to share their stories, um, you know, what, who's going to talk about each issue. So you'll have time in the afternoon to sit and talk with everyone about that so you can have a good plan. Then this year, we're actually very excited to be jo joined by the CERN Foundation. They're going to be holding their annual Ependomoma Awareness Day event with us, which is great. And that's going to be um, at five o'clock right outside of our training room. It's really cool because it's a butterfly release. So um, hope everyone for great weather so that we can have um, that beautiful butterfly release with the CERN Foundation. And then following that, we'll have the reception, um, advocates reception, more of a chance to talk to others in your state or get to know 
advocates from across the country. Um, for some of you who have been many times, it's a chance to catch up with all the friends you've made in, in the past few years. So it will be a nice end of the day on Monday. And then um, you know, recommend if you want to grab a bite to eat or something and then have an early bedtime because as you'll see on the next slide, um, it's an early day on Tuesday, um, on two slides actually. So we'll um, go to the next slide, talks about our advocacy training. Um, sorry, Casey, I'm referring to all different slides and <laughs> confusing. <Sorry. it. laughs> um, so the advocacy training on Monday, of course, you'll meet other advocates from your state. And as David had mentioned, um, we have a few priority issues we'll be asking Congress to support. And so we'll talk about all of those. We'll be sending those um, briefs to you as, it, as Lisa had uh, suggested. And then we're going to also be lucky enough to hear from speakers about brain tumor research and the importance of advocacy. So we have a few people coming in. Um, we, I know we are going to be lucky enough this year to once again have the chief of the neuro-oncology branch at NCI, who everyone uh, really loved hearing from last year and a chance to ask him questions. And then we'll also have the legislative director of one of our congressional champions. So he can tell us why it's so important um, for you to go and visit those offices and why they love to hear from their constituents. We'll learn um, kind of the nuts and bolts of having an effective meeting with congressional offices. And then you can practice how that meeting will go and sharing your connection to the brain tumor cause um, with your state groups. We'll also hear from Soapbox Consulting. They're the organization that um, actually goes ahead and schedules our meetings. They have amazing relationships on Capitol Hill with all of the schedulers. So they take all of your home addresses and they set up these meetings. Um, they give us, they have an app we can use, a mobile access um, to be able to see all of our information as well as giving us paper schedules um, that will set everything up for us. Um, and then you'll receive your schedule of meetings towards the end of the day. NBTS staff will all be there, so you'll have a chance to ask any questions you have um, on Head to the Hill or really anything that NBTS is working on. We'll have a number of our staff there with us. And then you'll receive all of your participant materials. So that's um, in addition to the issue briefs, you'll get um, sort of logistical information, you'll get um, you know, the meeting roles and social media recommended um, sample posts for social media so you can share about your experience on social media. So we'll make, try and make sure you have everything you'll need for both Monday and Tuesday. So Tuesday, the big day, um, it will start early. So this year we're at the Georgetown Hotel um, University, sorry, Georgetown University Hotel and Conference Center, which is a little bit further away from Capitol Hill. The benefit of this location is it's a really beautiful conference space and there's a lot of room for us to spread out, which is um, great because this year um, we have really high numbers of attendees, which is just fantastic. So many of you are interested in coming. Um, so we're a little bit further away, which means we need to get on the bus a little bit earlier. So um, we will be giving you vouchers for breakfast to eat at the, the faculty club at Georgetown University, which is right at the by the lobby in our hotel. Um, and then right after that, we'll have to be boarding buses by no later than 715. And then we'll depart for Capitol Hill. Once we get to Capitol Hill, we have a home base for the day. It's at the United Methodist Building, which we'll show a map in a few minutes, but it's very close to both the House and Senate office buildings. And then um, we can meet um, we can go there if anyone has luggage they need to leave there, they can do that. Um, and then we can head over and do a group picture at the Capitol. Um, I see someone asking a question about whether if you're not staying at the hotel. Um, so you have two choices if you're not staying at the hotel. One is you can either still come to the hotel early on Tuesday morning and get on the bus with the rest of us. The other choice is just to make your way to the United Methodist Building and Capitol Hill on your own. And then um, just meet us, we'll be on the backside of the Capitol, the main Capitol building, um, close to sort of looking towards the Supreme Court to take a group picture at 9 a.m. So you would just have to take the Metro or a cab or something and meet us there. Then from 9.30 to 5, you'll have three meetings, um, or sorry, at least three meetings with your members of Congress. So each of you will get to meet with both of your, um, the offices of both of your U.S. Senators and your U.S. member of the House of Representatives. 
if you're in a group that has, um, say your state has four people from it, you're all from different congressional districts, you would um, have four meetings with members of the House of Representatives plus your two, Congress, two U.S. Senators. So it's the amount of um, meetings is really going to depend on the makeup of your state and your group. Um, but you'll, like I said, you'll get that schedule by Tuesday, uh, by Monday afternoon. Um, and actually, we may even have that a preliminary schedule um, to email you just before Head to the Hill starts, um, maybe towards the end of the week before. And then, as David had mentioned, um, we'll be talking about those three issues, the medical research funding through NIH and NCI, also um, the Childhood Cancer Star Act, and oral chemotherapy parity legislation. And then all day, even though um, you know, you're going to have meetings, if at any point you want to stop into the United Methodist building, it's a great spot um, to take a break, to go and chat with other advocates and staff. There'll also be um, snacks and waters there, so please feel free to come by and, and stop there at any time. At the end of the day, uh, once you're done, then once your meetings end, you're done for the day and the event is concluded for you. So there is no end of the day um, sort of meeting or event because everyone's schedules are different. So feel free to just stop into the United Methodist building, you know, say goodbye to staff and um, just report in on how your day went. We love to see everyone at the end of the day and hear how everything went. So we'll look at the next one. So here's a, just a quick picture for you. Obviously, you're not going to remember any of this um, when you're, once we get there. So we'll provide these maps for you there as well. Um, but if you look at the main capital in the middle, um, if you look towards the lower right of that, there's the triangular building. If Casey has her cursor and wants to <laughs> hover it over the, the United Methodist building, there you go. Thanks, Casey. Um, that's the United Methodist building. Um, to the right of that, the um, numbers four, three, and two there, those are the Senate office buildings. So um, most of the time, Soapbox has it scheduled that you start your day there. So you'll do your two Senate um, off meetings first for the most part. And then once you're in those buildings, there's tunnels underneath, so you can travel underneath there to get between the buildings. Um, at the Later in the day, um, on the other side, where it's, we look at 9, 10, and 11, those are the House office buildings. So um, those were, it's where your members of the House of Representatives will be. Um, if you see to the far right, you see Union Station with an M for Metro over there. And towards the far left, behind the House of Representative buildings, there's another M um, for the Capitol uh, Metro stop. Um, yeah, there's a couple of them, I guess. There's yeah, one to the left and then further down. So Capital South is the closest one there. So you can either, if you're still staying at the hotel or if you're going to the airport after Head to the Hill, um, besides cab or Uber, you could take the Metro um, and those spots, those stops are right there. So um, the next slide, this is just to talk quickly about during your meetings. So like I said, um, you'll be with your state groups and you'll be meeting with those different offices. Before you go in, you're gonna be talking on Monday to figure out who's going to be doing what, just so you have a clear plan going into the meeting. And then um, once you're there, you're likely going to be meeting with congressional staff who specializes in healthcare legislation. So many of them will have heard about some of these bills. Um, if they haven't heard about these specific ones, they'll probably just have a general awareness because that's their specialty um, for the most part. Um, we'll also let you know on your schedule from Soapbox if some of your members of Congress already support these things. In that case, instead of asking them to support it, you can thank them, um, which we'll talk about more at Head to the Hill, but that's just as important as asking for their support to let them know that we're really grateful that they are supporting it. So um, then we'll talk about those three um, those issues and ask for their support. And like Lisa said, um, I think I was being optimistic that being, <laughs> trying to make it a little shorter, one minute or less, is probably unlikely. So the two minute story or less. Um, and during Head to the Hill, we can talk to you during our training about how to try and relate some of those stories to the policy issues. Um, we've found in the past, and those of you who have attended in the past, have probably seen that that can really make an impact if you say, you know, this is my story. This is my connection to the brain tumor community. And in my case, I lost my dad to a brain tumor. So this is why I want there to be more research so that 
other people don't lose their dad. So it's sort of like making that connection. Um, so I think that's um, basically that in case you want to go to the next one. Thank you. And so just a couple small things to remember for during our meetings. We are all representing the National Brain Tumor Society on that Tuesday. Um, I know we'll all be coming from different organizations. And of course, it's, we're always welcome to you know, introduce ourselves in whichever way um, we'd like. But we definitely want to stick to the issues we're talking about. Um, if anyone has other concerns or legislative matters or state and local issues that they had been wanting to speak to their member of Congress about, we just ask that you set up a separate meeting um, for things like that so that we don't lose focus on these three important issues to the brain tumor community. And just a reminder that this is a nonpartisan event. So, um, you know, not trying not to um, do any bashing of one side or the other, things like that, that make sure we, um, you know, we make sure we're supporting both sides of the aisle because um, we definitely have supporters uh, across the spectrum. So that's, that's a really great thing. And I think um, that's it for me, Casey, if you want to take over here. Thanks, Lainey. So during Head to the Hill, uh, we want to create a presence. So everyone that we see, as well as the brain tumor community across the country, knows that you are at Head to the Hill on, on Capitol Hill advocating. We'll provide you with buttons, t-shirts, and other materials that will show members and staff, as well as anyone you see on Capitol Hill that day, uh, that the brain tumor community is making their voices heard on Capitol Hill. Um, also, please make sure to take pictures and, and video of your experiences so we can spread the word on social media and on our website. Uh, we will be sharing footage from the day on social media, but we will also want to make sure that you let all of your contacts back home know about your experience, uh, especially people from the brain tumor community who weren't able to join us on Capitol Hill. So share, share your pictures and videos on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can blog about your experience, encourage other people to take part in the day of, uh, in action, on Action Day on May 3rd. If they can't be in DC, we'll send information about how they can connect with their members of Congress from home. Uh, and we'll share tips with you at our Monday training about how to talk about Head to the Hill via social media. Um, and a few logistical considerations. So there is security at every building. So if you're going outside and have to come back in, please leave enough time for possible lines at security. And that does happen uh, from time to time. Um, and as Lainey mentioned, if you're traveling between buildings on the Senate side or between buildings on the House side, there are tunnels that connect uh, those buildings. So you can avoid having to exit and go through security again. Uh, and we'll provide you with a map uh, that you saw in the previous slide. So, and if you see members of the Capitol Police Department uh, who are in all of the buildings, feel free to ask them for directions if you're unsure. And that's also good, um, they're a good reference for the tunnels, which aren't always easy to find, but they're there and very convenient uh, if you're traveling between buildings. Um, finally, meeting schedules can sometimes change up until Tuesday. So prepare to be flexible if a member of Congress has to change your meeting time. And because their availability can be limited, make sure to be on time for all of your meetings. Uh, Soapbox Consulting will provide you with their phone number, which you can call if you're running late or have any conflict, uh, scheduling conflicts arise. And after your meetings at Head to the Hill, it is very important to thank your member of Congress or staffer for their time and remind them of your request for support. So we will provide you with a thank you email template and we find it's best to follow up right away. Um, send that email that day or the following day if that's possible. Uh, make sure to get business cards at each meeting so that you have the staff person's direct email address. Um, your group will also need to fill out a report back form on each meeting that you attend. These forms are extremely important. In order to plan how we focus on our advocacy efforts in the future, we need to know what the office has said about various issues and conduct any follow-up that's necessary. Uh, you can provide the feedback through the form we'll provide, a paper form we'll provide, or there's a soapbox app that uh, you'll get information to on Monday that you can use for that form. Okay, and things to do after the event. Um, 
we'll, we'll give you the link to the online evaluation of the event so you can share your experience with us, tell us what you think um, about the Monday training day and Tuesday. If you enjoyed your experience, share that with us or if anything could be improved upon, we wanna know that too. Uh, that will help us make this an inspiring and meaningful event for the brain tumor community uh, and advocates who attend in the future. And finally, we will share a template with all of you to submit a letter to the editor in your no local newspaper sharing your experience, and that just further solidifies the action that you've taken uh, at Head to the Hill for members of your state. Okay, so we're almost to the end, um, but one more thing, please make sure to get in touch if you have any special needs we should be aware of. Uh, if you need time between, extra time between meetings or any assistance at all, please uh, contact us so we can make sure to accommodate that. Uh, if you haven't already, join the Facebook event page for Head to the Hill, which I've plugged a couple times in the chat already. Um, but it's a great way to connect with other members and get, uh, you know, quick updates from us on social media. Uh, and you can also connect with other uh, advocates from your state and ask questions of people who've been there before if it's your first time attending. And also as mentioned on chat, there is a Head to the Hill team for Race for Hope DC, which takes place on Sunday morning, um, May 1st. And if you're in DC early, please con consider attending. It is a wonderful, inspiring event um, and one of the largest fundraisers for the brain tumor community. And uh, it, it would be really worthwhile to attend that event. And one of your team members, one of your advocates has created a team, a Race for Hope DC Head to the Hill team. Uh, and so that link is on the Facebook event page and also in the emails you've been getting from me. So check that out and join the team uh, if you'll be in town early enough and are interested. Um, finally, feel free to reach out to me anytime. My email is listed here, ktroy at braintumor.org, and my phone number is 520-762-4544. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions or concerns or just um, be excited with you. Uh, just feel free to contact me anytime. I look forward to meeting all of you at Head to the Hill. Um, so I will uh, ask Stephen to unmute the lines to, add, to see if you have any questions about Head to the Hill. But I wanted to make sure um, that you are, so I wanted to make sure that you are excited and ready to go and feel confident uh, in this awesome uh, event. So I'm ready for your questions. Stephen, if the lines are unmuted, that would be awesome. Sure. Um, just so everybody knows that the best way to do this, um, just so we're not all completely unmuted at the same time, is that if I unmute us, you might want to mute yourself if you don't have a question, just so we're not getting any feedback or hearing what's going on in your house. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do, however, is we actually had um, Cindy, uh, you had actually raised your hand with your iPhone, but we're, probably were unable to do the chat. Do you still have a question or was it answered? No, I still have, a, I just had a comment. Uh, the slide said Tuesday, May 6th. And I just want to make sure I had not uh, put my, the wrong dates. I thought it was the second and third. Your dates are right. <clears throat> okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that typo. We'll fix that, the slides, before sending them out. Okay, okay. great. So for any of you who might also have a question, um, just so I can do this, if you can just either use the uh, raise hand button, which is in chat, or you can um, just write in the chat real quick. And what I'll do is I'll just unmute you. Oh, oh my goodness, here comes Lisa Peabody. <laughs> so I'm um, asking this because uh, another person asked this. Lainey, is um, Soapbox going to send out an email so that people can download the Soapbox app so convenient? Um, so I believe that, and we'll have to double check this with Soapbox, but what they had done, I think last year, and they said they would likely be doing this year, is they'll be sending an email probably around Friday before, letting people know of their um, participant code that can be used online to see their schedule. 
So um, you'll be able to go to Soapbox's website and type in the code to take a look at your tentative schedule. Um, they will caution and will caution as well that it could change from that point. Um, but that's just to give you a tentative idea of what it will be. Changes can happen through the day on up until Tuesday. Um, but they'll give you a code that you can enter online. I don't think they are using the app anymore, unfortunately. Um, I know I saw a chat question about that, so I just wanted to clarify that. I think the last time we had asked them, they said that um, that you would do, you would be able to do it just by going to your browser on your mobile um, phone or tablet. So um, you would just go in there, enter in your code, and you'll be able to see your schedule. But just um, an FYI that if anyone has the app from before, I still had it and it still seemed to work. So <laughs> if you prefer the app, you can always try that. Okay. Thanks, Lainey. Um, all right, Carl, I'm going to unmute you. You got a question? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm under some very strict financial uh, restrictions. And I can fly down. I got to fly into Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore, Washington International. Is that a that uh, far from Georgia? Obviously, it's outside of DC, but uh, how far is that away from uh, Georgetown uh, a Hotel? You know, I just mapped it last night, and it looks like it's uh, about an hour from the, from the airport to Georgetown University Hotel. Okay, so for those of you who, who had ha with that question, he was just asking that how far um, the BWI airport is from DC, and Casey let you know it's, uh, or for at least from the hotel, and it's about an hour. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, I'm seeing some questions in chat, so I'm just gonna ask them if that's all right, Casey. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, yeah, that's great. So let's go all the way to the top. I don't want to miss anybody. Okay, um, if uh, it, if it's just impossible to arrive before Monday morning around nine thirty a.m., is that is that all right? Lainey, do you want to talk about that? <laughs> She might be muted. She might be muted. Okay. So it's preferable that you you attend the entire training, but if you have to miss a part of it, it's not the end of the world. You know, we can we can try to fill you in um, on on what you've missed. But 9:30 is not mit missing much of the day. It's um, uh, so that would be fine. Just let me know, uh, and I can make sure we have materials available for you. Okay, great. Um, I'm sorry, Cindy. Did you have another question? I did. I'm new to the uh, Brain Tumor Association and CERN, um, and also recently diagnosed. Uh, but I have, uh, and maybe I'm at the wrong spot. I have a intramedullary spinal cord tumor. I do want to be involved, but is this including that as well as the brain tumors? A lot of our um, statistics, statistics do talk about um, brain and central nervous uh, system tumors. So, um, and also, I guess just we're open really to anyone that's interested in coming and advocating for these issues. Um, so, of course, we think you're in love. Would would love to have you there, and um, and think you are part of our community. So, we'd love to have you. Okay, great. Um, so. For those of you who are asking um, what to do um, if staying elsewhere, um, because I guess that we have some uh, booking with the hotel, uh, what I would probably do is we actually have a travel and information uh, section of the site in the FAQ, but for uh, Casey and Laney, just because of you guys and your regular trips to the capital, and Lisa, of course, can answer this too. Um, are we in particularly favoring one place or another in order for them to get to us or not? Is this for meeting us at the Capitol in the morning on Tuesday morning, Stephen? I think that this is not only just for meeting us with that, but, but, but basically the idea is that it's also for training. Because, if, for example, like uh, Holly Gainsborough asked this question because it's like if the hotel is completely booked already, 
um, or, if, or, or if there's an issue with getting in, how, how to get there. Like, for example, she, right. like, some people are mentioning like the Keybridge Marriott. Okay, great. Thank you for asking that question. Yeah, so um, the Georgetown University Hotel did fill up. If you are still interested in getting a room and you haven't, um, the Keybridge Marriott does have some rooms available. And the Georgetown shuttle, so the same one that you would have to take if you were taking the metro, actually stops at the Keybridge Marriott. So um, you can, if you're staying at that hotel, the shuttle bus will stop right in front to bring you over to Georgetown. Okay. And this is a specific question for those people in DC. Um, is there any other jurisdiction to be assigned if they're a resident of DC and they don't have a, a voting rep on the Hill? Stephen, you're breaking up a little bit there for a second, but I think I know what you're asking about the um, residents of DC. Mm -hmm. So um, for the most part, you will just be assigned to your member of Congress. Um, but there are some people that are interested in attending more meetings. If you are interested in joining more meetings, please email Casey or just advocacy at braintumor.org. We can let Soapbox Consulting know. So for example, if you're originally from a different state or um, you would like to go attend more meetings, so you want to go with the Maryland group or Virginia group, just let us know and we'll be happy to set that up for you so you can attend a few more. Awesome, thank you. Okay, um, so it, it looks like, do we have any other questions? It looks like there are some questions about uh, the template that Lisa talked about for the index card. So maybe um, we can send out information about the index card and her tips for that along with this, the information from this meeting. Uh, so we can, we can include that in our follow-up meeting or follow-up email, excuse me. And then the brief uh, on the topics that we discussed uh, will be available. We'll send those out in the next couple of days. So I'm going to send a recording of this webinar and a few notes as well as the briefs uh, to you in, in the next uh, few days via email. So look out for those. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so much for joining this webinar. And uh, if you have any questions following this meeting, please feel free to call or email anytime. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in DC on May 2nd. Thank you.